Hello everyone, welcome to skadia.com. My name is Hira Imran and today we'll talk about wrist and hand. So first let's uh, look at all the contents that we'll be covering in today's lecture. So first we'll talk about acute pain and trauma. So uh, we'll discuss different types of conditions um, which result, uh, which are as a result of some trauma or acute condition, any fall or um, injury results uh, that results in fractures or abrupt um, consequences uh, are all acute conditions and we'll also discuss some chronic conditions. So first of all, let's focus on the acute conditions. So in acute conditions, we'll discuss non-displayed scaphoid fractures, which are um, due to uh, falls on on an outstretched hand or when somebody uh, something hits uh, on the scaphoid um, area of the wrist. So scaphoid is actually a carpal bone. We'll uh, discuss it in uh, detail, uh, it, how it is visualized on x-rays and how its uh, fractures are uh, visible on x-rays. And sometimes it's not very uh, easy to uh, detect a scaphoid fractures. And sometimes you have to go for other uh, modalities other than x-ray uh, like MRI or CT scan. So we'll discuss this in uh, in detail. Then we'll discuss other acute conditions, including Coley's fracture. So we we will discuss Coley's fractures as well. So Coley fra uh, Coley's fracture is uh, mostly accompanied uh, or can actually damage a median nerve. We'll see how uh, how that happens. We'll see the entire. Um, we'll look into the entire mechanism of this injury that results in uh, Coley's fracture and the resultant placement of the fragments, which can um, therefore result. Uh, uh, damage the uh, structures clo in, in close proximity with the fracture, uh, fracture segments. So then we will talk about intra-articular fractures of distal radius. We'll see, we will uh, discuss in detail what distal radius is and how um, it articulates with different um, carpal bones and the ulna bone and we'll see how uh, intra-articular fractures are visualized on x-rays or other uh, radiological modalities. Then we'll uh, talk about incomplete buccal fractures. So these are common in young children because um, like we discussed earlier in previous lectures as well, so what, what happens is that young in, uh, children, their periosteal layer of the bone is very thick. Therefore, not a lot of force is required to uh, break the bone, but it only a, a small amount of uh, force can actually bend the bone before breaking it. And uh, sometimes there is an incomplete fracture with the bending. And what happens in adults is that uh, uh, a relatively large amount of force is required to break the bone even though the periosteal layer is uh, very thin so there is no bending uh, but uh, because it is very uh, thick in uh, density a lot of a relatively larger force is required so that is the basic difference in the bone of uh, uh, young children or um, the bones of adults. So incomplete buccal fractures are when the bone is um, bent and there is some fracture. So we'll see how that appears on radiographs. But like I said before, this is common in young children. So then we'll uh, discuss scaphoid fractures. Um, so scaphoid is, like I said before, it's a it's, um, uh, carpal bone. We'll see w uh, its placement and how its fractures are very common and uh, um, the resultant fractures can actually uh, damage the uh, ligaments or tendons because there are a lot of ligaments and tendons in close uh, proximity because the carpal bones are really uh, all together. All eight of them are together. So we'll see uh, their placement and their their entire anatomy. And uh, then this will be uh, clear how scaphoid fractures can um, be very dangerous and uh, um, damage a lot of other structures as well. So. 
Then we will also talk about the tearing of scapulo, uh, scapho lunate ligament. So scaphoid and lunate are two uh, carpal bones and they are joined by the ligament. So a ligament is a structure that joins the bone to another bone. So, And a tendon is a structure that joins the muscle to the bone. So that's uh, two different things. So a ligament is what joins two bones together, right? So scapulo uh, scapho lunate ligament is present between the scaphoid carpal bone and the lunate carpal bone which is in the uh, lower um, uh, line of the uh, or the proximal carpal uh, layer so then we'll talk about TFCC tier. So it is, again, not very common. It is very rare, but uh, so this stands for trifibrocartilaginous uh, complex. So we'll see how uh, it tears, uh, how it tears, and how it affects the um, uh, the wrist. So there are four ligaments in this complex. So we'll see uh, the anatomy of those uh, ligaments. And we'll see how uh, the tiers of each, uh, all of them together, or any of them, or uh, multiple uh, um, tiers can uh, complicate the wrist uh, area. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that, uh, that in detail as well. So then we will talk about metacarpal fractures. So metacarpals are this, uh, these bones, these five metacarpal, one, two, three, four, five. So these are uh, uh, the bones after the carpal bones and uh, we will see how their fractures appear. We'll see uh, mostly the common fractures here are spiral oblique fracture. We'll see how uh, they appear on radiographs. We'll talk about it in detail, the mechanism of the injury as well. So. Then we will talk about dislocated uh, PIP joint. So PIP is proximal interphalangeal joint and the dislocation is not very common but um, um, due to trauma or falls it, uh, it is seen. So we'll, we'll see how dislocation appears on radiographs and all of the um, uh, consequences of it. So uh, sometimes this uh, dislocation can be uh, reduced um, with closed reduction. That is, you can reduce it, uh, place it back to its anatomical position without any surgical intervention. But mostly, uh, when uh, PIP or small joints are involved, you do need uh, surgical intervention. So we'll talk about dislocation of PIP. Um, relative to the third uh, finger so and it can happen in any finger but it's um, if it's seen it's rare but if it's seen it's mostly seen in the uh, second and the third finger so then we'll talk about chronic conditions. So chronic conditions are conditions that are um, uh, due to some underlying long uh, disease or process that has been uh, going on for a long period of time. So we'll discuss some chronic conditions. So the previous, all of the previous conditions that we were talking about, the fractures or the tears or uh, all of these uh, things, these are these, uh, those were acute conditions. So now we're going to talk about the chronic conditions. So first we're gonna, uh, going to look into some soft tissue masses and how they appear on radiographs. So on uh, on x-rays, you can only see this uh, shadow um, on x-rays, but x-rays do show if there is any calcification uh, within the uh, soft tissue mass. Uh, also you need uh, MRI or not CD scan. CD scan is not very uh, um, um, uh, is not a very good option for soft tissue masses, but MRI is very um, is um, is a good option to look uh, for uh, changes in the soft tissue uh, contents or uh, to visualize soft tissue masses. So then we'll talk about endochondroma, which is the cartilage cancer. So we'll see how that appears on the radiograph. Then we'll also talk about um, osteosarcoma, which is the bone cancer, and uh, we'll see how that appears on the radiographs as well. So then we're going to talk about degenerative joint disease, which is a which is a classical chronic disease of any joint anywhere in the body. So we'll discuss how uh, DJD or also called osteoarthritis um, appears on radiographs when um, it is um, off the wrist. <clears throat> 
Then we'll also talk about psoriatic arthritis, which is also a type of arthritis. We'll also differentiate osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. And then we'll also talk about psoriatic arthritis. So psoriatic uh, arthritis is um, arthritis, which is um, underlying the skin, which is uh, psoria psoriasis appears on the skin and the underlying bone is also um, uh, arthritic so we call it psoriatic arthri uh, arthritis so uh, psoriasis is redness of skin with a silverish uh, scaly uh, appearance so that is psoriasis but um, the condition of the skin appears first that is actually um, um, diagnosed first because the arthritic change, uh, it starts before the skin changes, but uh, people are not very um, aware of the initial arthritic changes, so they are ignored and thus they are actually diagnosed after the diagnosis of psoriasis. So this is a little bit about psoriatic arthritis. We'll see how that that is visualized on uh, radiographs. So in the end, we'll talk about ganglion cyst, which is um, um, a fluid-like sac which contains uh, uh, the contents of intraarticular, uh, which contains some intraarticular contents, which can uh, be, uh, which are due to some uh, tendon rupture, are now in, uh, outside the uh, the in, uh, the capsule of the joint. So the ganglion cyst actually consists of some. Uh, uh, thick uh, fluid, which is uh, mostly transparent, so we can uh, you, we can actually drain it out with incision, and it's it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, it's sometimes pressable, so it's uh, we'll see how that appears on radiographs. There is sometimes calcification of it as well, so we'll see uh, it in detail in uh, the lecture. So we'll talk about it. And uh, that will be the end of the chronic conditions. So we will see all the acute and chronic conditions. We'll discuss them and we'll see how they appear on radiographs. And that will be it for today's lecture. And if you want to uh, watch other videos on uh, on radio uh, radiological topics, then please visit Scalia.com. That's it. Thank you for watching.